today we're taking a look at the Karen Dosh gouache studio. These are dry gouache paints. I've used gouache in the past. I've looked at opaque watercolors in the past, but I've never looked at dried gouache paints, especially not on this channel. I picked these up at David Art Supply in Metairie, Louisiana, quite a bit of time ago. And I look forward to diving into these and exploring them with you guys today. We're gonna get started by cutting this thing open. And I'm just gonna use a rotary tool to get it started. There are eight gouache colors inside this nice metal tin. Ooh, it really is a nice metal tin. Fancy. Oh, cute. These look a lot like the like a larger version of the Shingansai watercolors we just looked at. Ah, I love that they're like, and it's a waste of space, kind of, but I love that they're like cute little pans that you could buy the refills for. They have a number on them. They have a barcode on them and then a divot in the bottom. So if you can find someone willing, to, someone who carries these in the US, open stock, you could get your, get a refill. It also comes with a white gouache. And, oh, wow, I thought this tray would be cheap, but it's actually very sturdy and it's not really meant to come out. So what? Okay, you, you could line them up across the bottom if you so desire. It also comes with a Caran d'Ache um, size eight. It looks like it's a synthetic, so that's actually really cool. I paid about $31 for this, maybe 32 at David's. And I wasn't really sure what to expect. And I'll show you guys the Shingansai in a minute. So Caran d'Ache gouache acrylic. And this is the gouache studio. And it looks like, yeah, it looks like they have additional colors too. This is cool. And then multiple languages. Let's see if we can get a color chart. No, no color chart. Okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna grab the Shin Gensai and then I'm gonna do a little digging and we'll talk some information because these are a lot cooler than I thought they would and I wanna come prepared. I have here my Holbein Shin Gansai, and I also have my Grumbacher Deluxe Watercolor, Deluxe Opaque Watercolor set. And I used to have a Pelican Opaque Watercolor set that I never used, so I rehomed it. But I do sometimes use the, whoa, <laughs> the, um, Grumbacher set. It's not bad. So these are transparent, or these are opaque watercolors. Fine Tech also makes fine color or fine tech. The people who make the, um, yeah, fine tech makes an opaque watercolor set as well. And I have not taken a look at their opaque set or their transparent set yet, but I am kind of eager to do so. So these are the Grumbacher opaque watercolors. And then these are the Holbein Shin Gansai watercolors. And you guys can check out the video review for these here. So, I'm trying to find a way so you guys can easily see both, but see how similar? I mean, the opaque, I mean, the, keep wanting to call them opaque watercolors. The gouache pans are much bigger than the Shingansai, which are bigger than regular half pans. So, a lot of watercolor, although they're a little shallow. So I may end up having to do an overview of all of my opaque watercolor slash gouache watercolors in the future, but we're gonna focus on this Caran d'Ache set today. So I'm gonna go do a little digging. So on the Caran d'Ache site, under the Studio Gouache subsection, it says, a favorite medium for color fans of all ages. Designed for introductions to art and teaching, the Karen Dosh Gouache Studio is a favorite medium for color fans of all ages and creative universes. Gouache Studio Gouache tablets are characterized by a unique, durable formula, and their texture contains no plasticizers whatsoever. Plasticizers would be like if they'd added acrylic. Instead, only natural vegetal binding agents are used, which maintain their smoothness and velvety fit finish while avoiding any cracking. Luminous and very finely, finely ground, highly concentrated pigments combined with these vegetal binding agents to form colors of incomparable beauty. Opaque and matte by nature, the gouaches are water soluble and have excellent coverages. While, oh, oh, excellent coverage, while painted surfaces remain flexible after drying. This means that a project in progress can then be worked on again subsequently. The Karen Dosh 
gouache studio. That is such a tongue twister. The Karen Dodge gouache studio is suitable for high density watercolor effects on solid backgrounds. Combinations with water resistant pastels makes it possible to achieve rich washed out effects, multiple paint layers, or a batik by simply, oh, by using overlaying and scraping techniques. And these are Swiss made. I've been doing a lot of digging because I was really hoping Karen Dosh would offer these open stock. They have a 15 set, I have the 8 set, but it seems like they don't. So really, if you're thinking about getting these, get hold out for the 15 set. Um, because as of right now, I can't find any information about open stock. I've been to Dick Blick, I've been to their website, I've been to Jackson's Art, I've done a little Google foo, and I'm still not finding any information about that. However, these seem incredibly well received. If you guys are looking for uh, outside resources and reviews, make sure you check out the blog post that's gonna follow really soon. So it's a little bit of a shame that there aren't more because they seem like they're great. Um, but given that they're well received, maybe Karen Dosh will consider releasing replacements and an open stock version of these. So I have a few numbers for you guys. I paid, like we said, about $32 from David Art Supply for this uh, eight piece set. But on Amazon, with the link included in the description below, you can get this set for 22 or you can get the 15 set for 33. And I really urge you guys to get the 15 set so that you have the full range of colors because it only seems like there's 15 colors available. Um, both size tins have the same exterior. They just have different inserts. And the 15 has this row full, but it still includes the brush and it still includes the white gouache. Karen Dosh also makes something called fan tempera, which seems to use the same form factor, but tempera is different from gouache. So it would be interesting to compare the two, especially since tempera it has like an egg binder and they say this gouache has a vegetal binder. I wonder if they consider gum Arabic, which is, which is plant derived to be a vegetal binder or if they're really talking vegetables. I know that might be a little, a little basic. Maybe that's a basic question. <laughs> I don't know. So, um, you guys can find all the information that I've dug up and links to external resources in the description below and on the full blog post. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of get this thing going. So it came with one synthetic brush. It looks like Golden Tacalon and it's already been sized so that the bristles don't get bent in transit. And we're gonna do our swatching on a fluid cold press watercolor block. This is the easy block, so it's the cellulose based paper. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. And there's a few properties I'm gonna to wanna to test. And you guys should know, we're gonna test opacity. These are gouache paints. It talks about how these are opaque paints. It also talks about how they dry matte and flexible. So what I'm gonna do is what I do with the watercolors. I'm going to do a gradiated wash across the top and I've done several lines so we can see how the transparency changes over the gradiated wash. And then we're gonna do mass tone swatches down at the bottom. And I am using Pintel's pigmented black brush pen. So this is gonna be waterproof once it's had a chance to dry. And I haven't really worked with dry gouache before, but I imagine it's like watercolor where it needs just a little bit of encouragement to get going. So I'm gonna pre-activate these pans to give them sort of the best chance at opacity and layering as possible. You guys know that white gouache is used to mix with other colors of gouache to help create pastels and it can also be used to make corrections. Oof, it is creamy. But it doesn't seem that opaque. Let me go back in, try painting over the black lines. But as you guys can see, it's nice thick saturated color, but not opaque saturated color. And they also seem a little bit grainy, at least in the pans, not so much as I'm painting, not particularly noticing like a grainy or gritty texture. But I'm also not noticing that promised opaqueness. However, given that there are so many positive reviews for these, I'm probably going to have to put them through the field test, give them the benefit of the doubt. A big regret is not getting the 15 color set since I don't think they had it at David's. Otherwise, I think I would have gotten it, especially if the price difference wasn't particularly significant. 
and they do seem to be the same eight colors in both sets, plus seven additional colors. So it's kind of like, ah, I can't justify having two sets. And I don't use enough gouache that I can just, ooh, there we go, there we go. The gray is actually tran uh, trans, uh, nope, opaque is the word we're looking for here. Opaque is the word of the day. All the other colors were not. And then, oh, oh no, 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 no. Gotta clean all that black out of my yellow. We're gonna do a nice, heavy mass tone. There we go. Well, sort of. This blue is interesting because it goes from a cool greenish blue to kind of a warmer blue, almost a cerulean blue as you water it down. Okay, I'm gonna give these a chance to dry and then we're gonna check back in and see how they look. As these dry, I just wanna point out that there are no cadmiums in this paint set, that these have the CE label, which means they, all, they comply with European legislation on the safety of toys. So there's nothing in this set that should be toxic. And this is also a good reminder to go ahead and pull out that white gouache. And I'm a little curious why we got a tube of white gouache and not dried half pans other than Perhaps half pans never really pick up the, never really have enough opacity. Now, if you mix some white in with any of these colors, it's probably going to be a heck of a lot more opaque. And gouache is tech, uh, usually handled very thickly. I've been told that when you paint with it, it should have the consistency of cream. And if you're curious about what colors are in the 15 color set, Lemon yellow, cad yellow, red vermilion, burnt sienna, burnt umber, yellow ochre, bright green, dark green, forest green, perhaps cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, Payne's gray, and black. It's, um, oh, now I really wish I'd gotten that set because it's got the colors I actually like to use to mix skin tones, whereas this is kind of a primary color set, which, um, I don't know, I really always struggle to use primary colors, to be honest. I always have a harder time when I have a primary color set. And in the set, we do have two reds, but we only have a one blue, one green, one yellow, and the gray. And you could achieve this gray by mixing the black with the white. So I'm not super sure why we lost a mixing color to a gray. Other than now you can do monochromatic paintings. And it's crazy how much the prices on this set vary, or this and the other set. On Cadmium, it was going for as much as $63. On Jackson's, it was going for like 40 something. On Blick, it was 33 for this one. So Amazon currently, that doesn't always hold, Amazon currently has the best price on these watercolor, or on this gouache. All right, so this is just about dried. The colors actually have a little bit more opaqueness to them than they did when they were wetter, although the, the uh, gray has kind of lost some of it. And there are our mass tone swatches down at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and get a fresh sheet of watercolor paper. Play around with these just a little bit. So as you guys have probably noticed, I really don't do a lot of gouache on my channel. I can't claim to be an expert on it. I'm just gonna make, I think, some like cute, cute fruit. And I'll just swap a Rooney. And let's see, we don't have an orange. We have a scarlet red and probably a cad yellow or something very similar to cad yellow. So we're gonna make our own orange. The brush that I included is not bad. It's a synthetic and I feel like for gouache you kind of need stiffer synthetics sometimes to fight with, well not really fight, but to utilize the gouache to its best capability since gouache can be very thick. I 
And the brush they included actually handles, ooh, I don't want to add too much water, actually handles quite well. Now this is a set aimed even at beginner painters. So that's great for me because when it comes to gouache, I am a total newbie. Let's clean some of this off so we can mix it with some green. Maybe a little blue. For an included brush, this brush is actually pretty nice. Usually the brushes that come with sets are kind of funky. Gonna try reconstituting that orange now and do a grapefruit slice. I'm gonna grab some of our two reds and hopefully get a nice juicy grapefruit color. dark, but not bad. It makes me want to paint cherries next. And then what? Some blueberries maybe? So we're going to grab the dark blue and the darker cooler red to get kind of a blueberry color. Ooh, that's a good mix. These mix decently well. It's like a nice, almost indigo purple. So these are kind of fun to paint with, and I bet that 15 color set is even more fun because it has colors like yellow ochre and burnt sienna, which just kind of make for like good skin tones, you know? Whereas this set doesn't really have anything that would sort of fit that niche. And I'm gonna do some nice green stems and leaves. There isn't even a brown in this set, which to me makes this even harder to use. Okay, so that, as you guys saw, Went down a little scroungy, not perfectly flat. We could definitely do another layer on it. These are designed to be layered. We could do another layer on it though, after it's had a chance to dry. So my friends who use gouache, what do you like to use? What are your favorite things to paint? What is your favorite brand to work with? And have you ever used something like this? A dried gouache, it's a little more portable maybe than bringing around half pans, or not half pans, tubes, sorry. Or maybe you don't like sets like this. Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoy watercolor, people tend to expect you to enjoy gouache. So I'm trying to learn, just very slow about it. It's kind of a cute, simple little illustration though. Nothing super challenging. So for our lemons, I want to shade them with a little bit of yellow green. So I'm going to mix even more yellow into the green we mixed for our limes and hopefully this isn't too watery. It's always been one of my struggles with gouache is working maybe a little too watery, too much watercolor, not enough gouache. And then even more yellow. Okay, then for our lime green, I'm gonna grab some more green and mix it in. Or should I have done another layer of the original lime green? What do you guys think? It's okay, I'm kind of getting used to these materials. So it's not a big deal. I'm gonna do another layer on the green leaves. See if we can't get something a little lusher. And then for the oranges and the grapefruit, I'm just going to grab a little more red, mix that in with my initial orange. It's certainly fun to play with already. Clean some of the red or the blue off of that red. 
and grab some of the darker red and use this to kind of shade the grapefruit. And I want to do another layer on these cherries because they are not quite as delicious as one would hope. And then on our blueberries, I'm going to grab more blue. Ooh, we made a nice purple there. Is this any darker? This is coming along pretty cute. I need to give this a little bit of time to dry. Ha ha, it's a little more dry. So we're gonna grab some blue and some green. That's gonna end up being the end problem with these is you're not gonna be able to get them as dark as you probably want them to go. Because other than mixing in black, you don't have like a purple or any other sort of alternative for that. And sometimes I don't wanna mix black in. Sometimes I wanna mix in another color. Gonna... Speaking of, we're gonna grab some black. And we're going to mix it in with the bloob. These are fun to paint with, though. One of the reviews I read recommends them as an above average sketching or drawing tool for children. And for sure, I would have been super excited to get these as like a teenager. My, As you guys know, my access to art supplies was really limited. But I don't necessarily think they have to be limited to kids, if you are a beginner artist, maybe you're interested in gouache, but you're a little intimidated, you don't want to waste a lot of gouache learning gouache, these could be kind of a nice low barrier of entry for that. And they're not the cheapest on the market, but they're fairly inexpensive and they perform well. That's kind of why I really wouldn't say these are a good option for kids because I do know some parents have a really hard time spending that kind of money on their kids who may or may not remain interested in the hobby. And if you're a parent watching this, you should know that I started getting interested in art at like nine and then for a while my interest dropped off when I didn't make it into Talented Art and then when I started reading manga at 13, it blew up. Like I was very, very interested in art. So just because your kid, their interest waxes and wanes, I would say it's not really a good reason not to get them nicer art supplies. I found that with a lot of kids, as they get older, their interest decreases because the art supplies fight them and they can't make what they want to make. Oh no, it's trying to lift. Must not be all the way dry. But it's cute. Not a great masterwork, but certainly something a beginner artist could achieve or um, a younger artist could achieve. So very, very easy to kind of get the effects you might be looking for with these. So it's a lower barrier of skill entry. The pans are pretty sizable. They ought to last you a long time. If your kid doesn't like it, you can maybe donate it to a local library or local school because they tend to be always having a hard, always hard up to find good art supplies. I've taught at like four different schools and even the nice schools are sometimes hard up. The schools with money are sometimes hard up for art supplies because the art department tends to be the department nobody, nobody gives endowments to. If your kid is too much of a risk, you know, there are other options. All right, I'm gonna let these dry and then I'm gonna play with the white gouache and add some white highlights. And I've used nothing but the size eight, which is, this is a little small for a size eight, but the size eight synthetic Caran d'Ache included with this set. All right, so this has mostly dried. I'm going to apply my white gouache just up here in the tin since the tin is kind of intended to be used as a palette. Ooh, and then we're going for a cream consistency. And I thought I'd ruined it. That's what the weird little noise was. And we're just gonna use this to add highlights because with gouache, 
um, your aim isn't necessarily to leave the white of the paper. Could have even done like a nice background color, but I kind of felt like all the colors I had in the set were kind of dark and I figured I would, anything I mix would be kind of dark. Well, I guess I could do kind of a nice blue with the white. Now I know that European art supply manufacturers and just European art in general tends to take children's art education a little more seriously than we do here in the US. Um, so stuff made for kids is kind of comparable to stuff made for adults over here. Not, it's not always, but like a lot of the stuff you guys will find marketed in the US to adults here is stuff that's usually considered children's great art supplies in like Germany or France, or I guess Switzerland since Karen Dosh. So even if it's marketed at kids, it can be really a really nice supply to use. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do, we don't have any actual blue on this piece, is I've got some white over here. I'm gonna grab some of this blue because it's a really pretty color and I wanna see how it mixes with the white. Since unlike with watercolor, when you want pastels, you mix in a white. Well, I mean, I guess you do that in watercolor too, but I tend to just use washes to lighten up what I'm doing. Okay, so that's a little, it's a little more. Let's get a dropper instead of using the brush. So I'm not gonna cover the whole area with blue because I feel like that really opens me up to a lot of mistakes happening. What I'm gonna do instead, I'm just gonna use the blue to kind of do a cast shadow. And I'm kind of overpainting some of my delicious looking fruit. That's kind of a shame, but you know, we're just playing around, figuring these paints out, experimenting. These are some really fun, fairly easy to use, moderately low mess wash paints. Could be if your classroom can afford it, could be a good option for a classroom set. Could also be really good for maybe nursing homes or hospitals, since it's kind of compact um, and kind of self-contained. You really just need your water and it even comes with the brush. And I've used the same brush the whole time. So like your additional materials for this set are minimal paper, Maybe a paper towel. Makes me want to play with the fan tempera, which is another kind of water-based transparent medium. It's more permanent though, because it uses egg as a binder, like egg whites, I believe. Try to do something a little more complicated for the field test. Maybe try to mix skin tones or something. I don't know, something a little less like, I'm taking the colors from the palette. I'm gonna put them right here. I did it. And this brush handles pretty well too. Really can hold a lot of the gouache and can really stand up to that sort of thick material. So honestly, this has been a lot of fun. I really enjoyed playing with this. Um, now, since it's gouache, theoretically, once it dries, I can go in and fix some of those areas where I overpainted. So I might do that, but that requires letting it dry. I don't even care if the corrections are visible. Just want to kind of test and see because I know I'm having trouble getting it thick enough to actually cover and that is a property of gouache is that you would be able to cover and repaint things and I don't know if I'm just working too thin or what all right so I'm just gonna fix these bloobs and then I think I'm about done with this 
So that was our look at the Karen Dash Gouache Studio. These are dried pans of gouache and I've seen opaque watercolors before, but I've never seen, and I do know that some people consider gouache to be opaque watercolor, but I've never seen opaque watercolor marketed as gouache sold in quite this form factor. So this was an exciting review. I really enjoyed it. This is the swatch test. I'll have a scan available later. And this is what I kind of created off the cuff with it. So thank you guys so much for watching.